disciples meeting Jesus for breakfast on a beach sometime between the resurrection and when Jesus ascends to heaven. As I read this story, the first question that pops in my head is, why is Jesus still around? Why is he there? Doesn't he have more important things to do, like head off to Rome and confront Caesar? Or I mean, he's accomplished what he's supposed to accomplish, right? Die on the cross to free us from our sins and raise us from the dead on Easter to give us new life. What more is there? But yet it seems there's something more that Jesus has to do. Yes, he frees us. Yes, he gives us with new life. But he's also apparently in the business of forming us to be the people God created us to be. It wasn't just enough to free us. It wasn't just enough to gift us new life. Jesus wants to shape and mold and change us so that we can be people that glorify God, that enjoy life to its fullest. And in this story, this counter on the beach, when they have this breakfast together, Jesus shows us two things that he does, especially for Peter, that help us to get a glimpse of how is it that Jesus, and through the Holy Spirit, is continuing this work of formation, this work of, of shaping and molding us to be people of God. There are two things that I think every human being needs. One is sense of belonging, and the other is a sense of purpose. And we see both of those things on display here and how Jesus interacts with the disciples. When he first calls them, he gives them this, especially, let me back up here for a second. There's two stories here, the interaction with the fish, and there's this interaction with Peter and his dialogue with Peter. And both of them illustrate important points to us. The story of the fish, when Jesus tells them, uh, go throw your nets on the other side. Remember, these are professional fishermen, just a couple of them were, and they've been out all night and gotten nothing. The world had given them empty nets. It seemed like their whole endeavor was a failure. And maybe you can relate to that, because oftentimes our lives can feel like it's just a bunch of empty nets, right? We try to do something, and no matter how hard we try, things fail. We want to have a family that loves one another truly, deeply, and no matter how much effort we put into it, there's discord. We want to have a successful business, we want to have great friendships, we want to get ahead in life, and no matter how much we try, all we do is come up with is empty nets. And yet this message to Jesus gives to the disciples is, just cast your nets, follow my advice, do what I say to you, even if it seems redundant, even if it seems that it goes against the grain or it's countercultural, Go ahead and do it and see what I can do. Because that response of 153 fish, which is amazing, and I always wonder who in the world had time to count the fish. It's probably math, you know, a tax guy and everything else, numbers guy. But what the, the, the symbolism, the image here is that if we follow what Jesus tells us, if we follow on this plan of formation, we're going to get nets that are abundantly filled. And this works against this image that society gives us of a stingy God, where we have to do many, many things in order to get a blessing or two from God. Or get God to pay attention to us, we gotta show up in church every Sunday, we gotta give our money, we gotta do this, we gotta do whatever. And this image that we see today, we see it every Sunday, is that God is not a stingy God. God wants to fill our nets up, overflowing with so many fish that it's more than we can ever, ever need or use. God doesn't hold back. And that is a message we hear every Sunday. We have to repeat it because it goes so much against this cultural picture that God's a stingy God. You've got to earn the blessings and the favors from God. That's not true. In the interaction with Peter, what we see is so powerful. Because remember, Peter is still reeling from his betrayal of Jesus. Three times he denied Jesus when Jesus needed him the most. And in the end, he ran away in fear and totally abandoned Jesus. Peter is distraught. Maybe you are living with a deep sense of shame or humiliation or failure at something that you have done, and it weighs down on you, the guilt of it all, or the shame of what it is that has happened in your life, where you deeply disappointed someone that you love. Peter is in that boat, figuratively. 
he was probably fishing because he thought, there's no more room for me left in Jesus' mission. I proved myself not worthy to be a leader in the church, whatever the church is going to be. I don't belong anymore. So he goes back to what he, he knows. He gets up that morning and he announces to his disciples, we're there because they don't know what to do either. He says, I'm going to go fishing. He goes back to his old job. Because, you know, what else is there for? And Jesus calls him, needs him. And what he does in that dialogue where three times he asks Jesus, Peter, do you love me? He's helping both Peter confess outwardly for his own benefit, but also so that the, the disciples around can see that no matter what Peter has done, he still has a place in God's community. He still part, he still belongs. And he still has a purpose in mind. Belonging to something is different than fitting in. We all know that we have a desire to belong. But too often we confuse that for having to fit in, we have to change who we are so that other people will like us and accept us. You know that old grade school, junior high emotion that we felt that we never really get over? We like it when people like us, right? We put all our effort into fitting in, changing who we are so that other people will accept us. But in this moment, Jesus is showing to Peter and all of the disciples, Peter, you belong because of you, because I love you, because you know that I love you, and you know that you love me. That makes you part of this community. And even with all your flaws and failures and your shame and your guilt, you still are part of this community, and you still have a purpose. This story just echoes the first calling of Peter and the disciples when they were in the boat, and Jesus calls to Peter, does that miracle, and then says to Peter, I will make you a fisher of people, right? And this is, the, this is Jesus telling Peter that despite everything that you've done, all the mistakes that you've made, that purpose is still valid. You are being formed in order to be part of this mission. This great work that God is doing to bring true love and reconciliation into a world that just doesn't know it. The same truths are echoed in Paul's story. When Paul, the person who persecuted and killed and stealed and robbed from Christians, all of a sudden meets Jesus, has a conversion, his heart is changed, and immediately he's been formed for another purpose, for a mission. Bring God's word to the Gentiles. In both of these stories, in the story of Peter and the story of Paul, we see being accepted and part of the community is integral to this formation. Paul had to be led by the hand back to the house of Damascus, then he had to be healed, he had to be accepted, and be part of the community of God in Damascus. In fact, they then wind up saving his life just a week after he, he meets Jesus. He's welcomed and he's a part of this community, even though he has done horrible things to them and to those whom he loves. Peter is welcomed to be part of the disciples' community. They don't hold it against him that he abandoned Jesus. Being a part of the community is so important. But also, Jesus is forming both Peter and Paul in these stories, not so that they can live a life outside of the world, a wonderful life filled with riches and glory and happiness and joy. Actually, he's forming them so they can go back into a broken world that will reject them and persecute them and jail them and beat them. Think about that. Too often, there are two big stereotypes that these stories just dispel. The first one is this idea of a, a stingy God. That you have to do lots in order to get a blessing from God. And the second is that God is forming us so we can have a wonderful life, like we can be lottery winners, you know, enjoy all the good things we, we dream about. But actually, in both of these stories, Jesus is forming, doing something incredibly important to form these disciples so that they can go back into the world, a broken world that will reject them, but that they can be part of this mission of helping others meet Jesus and find the blessing of knowing who God is. Amen? Amen? Our takeaways for today. Jesus provides two things that Peter needs most, and he, as well as us. We need the same two things most. A sense of belonging 
because he welcomes him back into the community with a sense of purpose. Because he tells him, be a leader, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And that's something we all need, a sense of purpose and a sense of belonging. And Jesus wants to form that inside of us. And the second takeaway is Jesus has freed his disciples and us. Uh, he gifted them with new life. He freed us when he died on the cross. freed us from the power and control of our sin. And he gifted us with new life through Resurrection Sunday. And he sticks around, just like Jesus through the Holy Spirit sticking around in our life. But he can continue to form them for a life centered around the church. Let's stand for our song of the day. <laughs>